This is Rick with Nashville House Painters and today I'm going to talk to you about how to paint a room. So just the normal sequence of the bedroom. So what's most important in painting anything is the sequence. So in here, whenever you do a room, you just want to look at it as ceiling first. Uh, if you're going to paint the door frames, you're going to do the door frames next. And then you'll do the walls and then the baseboards last. Uh, the, so when we're painting the ceilings and we're going to paint the walls, so we'll do the ceiling first and we'll come down on the wall a little bit so we make sure we get all the paint in the edge of the ceiling. So that's done like that always, every time, and then that way you can cut it in faster, you don't have to straight edge it. And then when we do this part of the wall, it's gonna be you know, easier to make a straight line and you won't have any other paint from the previous paint going up into the ceiling. So we always try to edge it down like that. Uh, some of the tools I like, I like these roller front covers you get. You get them at Sherwin Williams, they're called a Colossus roller, and they clean out really easy. Uh, they, this is another one that, uh, that I like. It's, uh, it's White Dove, it's another really good roller cover. So you always want to use a good roller cover. Don't go cheap on that. The frame, you know, there's different frames. This one's a Wooster frame, you can get that at Home Depot, or I think Lowe's has them too that you can get them there. The other tool we're going to use to do it with, I like to use the Purdy brushes. Uh, this one's a little stiff brush. I think the name of it is, uh, you know, it's medium stiff. It's, it's a three inch brush, but, and, and I like the angled sash brush. So it, you can get up into corners, like if you're doing around corners of trim, it's easier to get in there than the straight sash brush. So that's how that'll roll. And another problem with, so this is the color we're doing, it's called navel, or navy, like navel, um, Sherwin Williams color. And the problem is you're going to have, it's going to come next to this trim, so it's going to show really, uh, every, you're going to see every crooked, every curve of the line. So you got to have straight lines, so we use a tape when, unless you're really good, if you're a really, really skilled painter and you're really sharp with your, your, your cut in lines, then you can do it without tape, but we're gonna use this tape, it's called frog tape. And it comes in, yeah, you can see right here, it's either green or yellow. But what's special about this tape is it doesn't allow you to, it doesn't let tape uh, paint bleed through. So we're gonna tape off all this right here and I'll show you how we're gonna tape it off, but just make it all a straight line there. So the lines are crisp and clean. Another problem we have with dark colors is you'll have what's called a hat band where you'll see a difference in your cut in and your roller. And so I try to use the best paint you can use. I would recommend for dark colors, I would recommend Sherwin Williams uh, Emerald Matte. And it's in, just in their matte finish. And that way you don't have any streaks. Uh, when you have dark colors too, if you use a flat, it'll, it's real soft, it scars up easy. And this has been the best paint we've ever used for dark colors. I would highly recommend it. I would highly recommend it. It's it's uh, you know more expensive, but you know you get what you pay for. So anyway, I'll catch you later. We'll paint the room. You'll see how that goes. Uh, I'll show you how we're gonna uh, do the. When we do this part here, we want to paint. Somebody will be cutting in while we're rolling it at the same time, so it can dry at the same time. And we also have just a primer we're going to use that I had some leftover paint that we had from another job. So this will make the walls dark and we're going to try to coat this with one coat with the emerald. So this will be our first coat and this is just some darker paint that we have that I can use instead of throwing paint away. We always have a problem with paint. What do we do with it? So we were talking about how we tape off the, the edges. So I, this is the way we do that. I just do one long strip. And, and, it, and so we have an exact straight edge there in the corner. 
and then just put your tape up against it and then go all the way down like that and then roll it on down and then keep on going and that way it all makes a straight line there's no crooks or anything like that and so when this is done you'll see a perfectly straight line and that trim paint comes out on the on the wall which is fine that's why you want to paint your trim first your, i mean your door casings first or door frames and then and then you just take it here i take a five in one tool which is a common tool that painters use and just put that right in the corner and then pull it off it comes off straight well you have a little tear there but that's not that big a deal so but that frog tape works really well you won't have any bleed over when we get done you're going to see a perfectly straight line because we want straight lines the first thing we're going to do before we even come into a room or even start painting is is the prep uh, we're going to tape off the trim a lot of times sometimes we're going to tape off the baseboards but the very first thing we do before we, we do any drywall repairs is we're going to sand it so i just take a sanding pole with a sanding head uh, cut some sandpaper and it goes it goes in there uh, any sanding head there's some round ones but we just take some hundred grit sandpaper and then i just go down the, all the walls the whole wall just so we can knock off any bumps or anything that was there from previous paint that's before we do any drywall repairs at all you know we sand it the very first thing so that's the main procedure is just stay in that in that mode it's just to make sure we take all the main bumps off uh, anything big that are bad we'll use other drywall stuff to fix that with but so that's the first thing we do is we sand off all the walls This is how you roll the wall. We've done this before, but it's always good to repeat the lessons, right? So when we roll a wall, uh, I like to use these pans. I don't know if some people want to roll out of a bucket, but I like these pans because they don't drip as much. Um, you know, you can also roll out of a bucket with a screen in it. You know, and I have guys that say, yeah, I'm gonna roll out of a bucket. And I'm like, okay, you can do it without drips because we don't want drips. Even though we're using drop cloths, we still don't want drips because People walk through the drips and it just causes more cleanup. So maybe a little slower with the pan, but but I like it because it's it just doesn't drip and we don't have to deal with cleaning up drips or tracking the paint on your floor. So offload the paint, get get your roller full of paint, then offload it. And then I've already rolled this part of the wall, but we're gonna roll. So first of all, we just offload the paint in the middle right there, and then we're gonna go two roller whips. Basically, I put it a little bit too far out. So I've got two roller whips, and then this one, this roller was really heavy. And then, so two widths of the roller, and then we're going to back roll. Back rolling gets it all out, gets all the lines out, any ridges, and it's real soft. We don't press the roller at all. There's no need to press it. Just let it lay there and let the roller cover do its work. And then we're back into that where we put that on there, two roller widths. And then we're back to the start again. So again, we just offload the roller, uh, load it up with paint, put your paint on right there, get it in the middle of the wall so it's not, you know, spread out evenly. And then two more roller widths again. Same thing. Back, forth, about, about two roller widths. And then I'm going to back roll it again, making it solid. This is the first coat. It's the primer. So we'll have, and then I come back out again. So I'm actually rolling over the space uh, one, two, three, three times. And then, and then I start again, put the next left thing there and go back and keep going around. That's pretty much it. Uh, when you get to the corners, you wanna not put much off into the corners. You know, like I might take my, my almost bare roller so it doesn't put too much where I don't have to get it out of the corners. And then I'll just start right here again, the same, same way, You're right there.
And we're back and we're done, finally. But this is the paint, and I really like this paint. It's a, as I said before, our Sherwin Williams Emerald Matte finish, and that's what I recommend for dark colors. This is a dark color. Normally, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but normally when you do a dark color, you have to have somebody roll and cut in at the same time so they don't have, there's, there's not a hat band, and, and this is, there's not a hat band here. You can look up here and see it's all straight. Yeah, I mean, it's, the ceiling's not straight because it's an old ceiling, but there's no um, hat banding. You, you can see all around here the whole thing. It's, uh, you know, actually, I, I mean, I haven't touched this up, and, and it's unheard of. You can't touch up a paint. This paint will touch up, too. Uh, right, I, mean, I don't know if it'll touch up months after you've done it, but, you know, after it dries, and you need to go back in, you miss a spot, it touches up, where normally dark colors will not touch up, but in the air room it does. So I couldn't recommend it even highly enough. So if you're going to do that, I would use it. Anyway, that's it. Thanks. See you next time.